So a question I actually get asked pretty frequently is, can I take a good hard drive out of a dead computer and just simply plug it into a working computer and have it actually work? Well, the short answer is yes, no, and maybe. Let me explain. That is simply because a lot of that depends on the type of drive in one system versus another. So in order to figure out whether you can actually swap drive from one computer to the other, you need to understand that there are different types of drives. Now I'm gonna briefly go over some of these with you so that you can look and see whether or not one drive will actually be compatible with another computer. The first drive I'm gonna talk about is an older style. It's called IDE and you can tell if it's an IDE drive because it has all these pins on it. Now, chances are if your drive has these types of pins, it's probably close to 20 years old. This technology has not been around for a long, long time. And if you have one with these pins, you're going to need to find an older laptop that will be compatible with it. So the odds of finding one of those, unless you have an extra one laying around, is gonna be kind of thin. Now the next type of hard drive, and this is the most common one you see nowadays, is what's called a SATA. Now I've got two different SATA drives here. If you look at the connections here, this is your power connection and this is your data connection. You can see that on both of these drives. Now, the difference between these is this is a mechanical drive. There's an actual spindle inside of it. This is what's known as an SSD drive. There's no moving parts in it. It's much faster than this one, but what's most important is the connection type. Even if you have a mechanical SATA drive, but the new system has a SATA SSD, it's perfectly fine. This will absolutely connect with this because it is the same type of connector. Now, the last one on the list is an even newer technology and it's called M.2. But what you need to be concerned with is the pins on this. You can see it's obviously much different than your traditional SATA drive. This M.2 is very specific to your particular computer. And generally only a newer computer is gonna have these. Now some computers do actually have a M.2 connector and a SATA connector. So in that regard, you could theoretically plug the SATA drive into a machine that has an M.2 connector, but you would actually have to boot to this drive instead of this one. Not that big of a deal. And at worst, you can always take this drive and clone it onto this drive. If you'd like to know how to do that, I put the video link up here for you, and I'll also put it in the video description. If the hard drives of both computers have the same type of connectors, then you're good to go. And then the answer is yes, you can physically swap from one to the other without a problem. But does that mean you can just plug it in, turn it on, and boot into Windows? Again, not necessarily but I'll get into that in a second. And before we get too far into it, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Have you found yourself stuck with a non-working or possibly pirated copy of Windows? Well, thanks to today's sponsor, KeysFan, you can be up and running again and 100% legal in about 10 minutes for less than $10. An unactivated copy of Windows prevents you from personalizing your computer. And if you want to upgrade your Windows 10 to Windows 11 now or down the road, you're going to need an authentic product key to do that. Use code AYCG50 to get 50% off Windows 10 or Windows 11 licenses. Use code AYCG62 to get 62% off Office 2019 or 2021. The purchase process could not be simpler. Simply search for the version of Windows or Office that you're looking for, add it to your cart, make sure you apply your coupon code, and within 10 minutes you'll have an email sent to you with a new product code. Go to your email and select the product key, Go to Windows Activation Settings, type or paste your product key, click Next, then Activate, and you're done. Now, back to your video. Now, before we get into this, I want to address something that I've seen in the comments recently where people are like, just get to it already. But you have to understand, when I make these videos, I'm appealing to a broad number of people. Some of them have zero computer experience and some of them are pretty knowledgeable. And the way I generally try to explain things is, first of all, the what, then the why, then the but, and then the how. Now, if you are already beyond those first couple steps, then feel free to go ahead and skip through the video. But some people may need to understand the purpose of why I'm showing them what I'm showing them. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna go in depth about how to remove one drive and physically install it in another one. There's a bunch of different YouTube videos that you can watch to show you how to disassemble or swap your hard drive. Once you've taken them apart and you've looked at the drives, if they have the same drive type, then you're good to go ahead and swap them. Go ahead and plug it in and we'll pick up from there. In this case, this is my bad hard drive. As you can see here, they're both SSD drives, so it's an easy swap. Just pop the drive in, lock it down, and now you're ready to try to boot Windows. 
Some of you may be wondering, is it possible to harm your good hard drive plugging it into this new system? No. Uh, the worst thing that would happen is that Windows won't boot. Uh, you might get a blue screen or something along those lines, but I have never seen a hard drive that has been installed into a working system that did not come with that system ever get damaged. So the good news is, is you just can try it and it's either gonna work or it's not. And if it doesn't, there are a few things you can try which I will show you how to do. So as I just said, even if the hard drive didn't come with the system that you're putting it into, go ahead and turn it on. Try to see if Windows even boots. A lot of times there is very little difference between one installation and the other. And so Windows will load generic drivers that will allow your computer to turn on. And the advantage to this obviously is that all your stuff from your old computer is still on this new drive in this other working computer. Now, what I would absolutely do if Windows allows you to boot is first go into your Windows updates and go ahead and allow it to update Windows for the new hardware that your hard drive is now recognizing. You gotta remember the hard drive that's going in this new system is looking for the old hardware from the broken system and it now sees all this new hardware, your video card, your sound card, all the motherboard components, all of that stuff. Windows has to go and get drivers for that stuff so that it'll work. So if it does boot and it does get you to your desktop, you still have to make sure your drivers are updated. So go into settings or control panel, and make sure you go to Windows updates and then let Windows update all those drivers. And then when it's done, you wanna restart your computer and then make sure that you can get back into Windows again. That's the first step that I would always do when swapping hard drives. Sometimes it just works first time right out of the gate. So I absolutely try that. And again, it's not gonna hurt the drive. So go ahead and plug it in and find out. Now, unfortunately, if it does not work the very first time, it's not the end of the world. Maybe you turn on your computer and when it fires up, it gives you a blue screen of death. Now, generally what this means is that there is too much driver incompatibility with what the hard drive is looking for, for example, a video card, and what the computer that you're plugged into actually has on board. So in these particular situations, what I would first recommend if you get a blue screen or some kind of error message is try to get into safe mode because what happens in safe mode is that your computer loads just the absolute bare minimum drivers for the computer to operate, for Windows to operate. And so if you can boot into safe mode and still get to your desktop in safe mode, you know at this point that the hard drive is probably going to work in this new system once you get the correct drivers. At this point, if you can get into safe mode, again, go back to your settings or your control panel, go to Windows updates, then at that point, let Windows try to install updates. And then once it's done in safe mode, try restarting your computer again. Now, if you need a little help with getting into safe mode, I won't go into all of that here. I did make a video I'll put up in the corner for you on how to get your computer to boot into safe mode. But once you do, at that point, let Windows do its thing and then restart. And hopefully at that point, you should be able to boot your computer to your desktop. So if you've put the hard drive in the computer and it doesn't want to boot, or maybe you get that blue screen, or for whatever reason you can't get into safe mode, there is one thing left you can try, and that is to do a system reset. Now, what you will have to do is boot to the advanced troubleshooting menu. I made a video before about how to do that. I'll put that right up here for you. And what you're gonna do is boot into advanced troubleshooting and then choose the reset option. And when you do that, make sure to select the option to keep your files. Now, this may or may not work because this is a drive that didn't come with the system, but theoretically it should. The good news is, is if you try the reset with the keep my files option and it doesn't work, you haven't lost anything. But that being said, it's always important to make sure that you have your files backed up because life happens and sometimes situations like this happen. And if you want to know how to properly back up your files, so in a situation like this, you will know that all of your stuff is safely tucked away. Watch this video right here. Thanks so much for watching.